Okay, so now that we've set up our Parse server, so it will use live queries and let us run live queries on our test object class. We've also made sure we're using version 1.8.5, at least 1.8.5 of the JavaScript client SDK. As long as both those things are true, then it means we can start using live queries. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out our query there. And underneath there, I'm going to create something called a subscription. Have I spelled that right? I think so. Yep. Is it a Q dot subscribe? Actually, let me move that up. Okay, so this is what we do. Any parse query object has a subscribe function and you generate the query as you normally would by using the various constraints. We've gone through them all before, so you can use equal to, greater than, less than, any of the other constraints which, which we've gone through and implemented in other parse queries. But instead of running find, or I should say in addition to running find, we can also create a live subscription. So again, once we've got our query ready, we, we call q.subscribe, we get a subscription object. And on this subscription object, we want to listen for events. Each event has a specific name, and if that event arises, it will call the function associated with that event. So just to show you, there's one event called open subscription, and to add some code which gets called whenever that event fires, we type subscription.on. We give it a name. So this event is called open. And then we provide it a function, a callback, which gets called whenever that event fires. So for now, I just want to console log subscription opened. Dot, dot. So the open event fires when the subscription has been accepted on the parse server and it's created a basically a connection from your client browser to the parse server so the subscription is open it's ready and it's available so if i now hit run and i wait a little bit i should get the callback subscription open so this means that the parse server is now ready to send us updates whenever uh, objects matching this query or failing to match this query are added to the database Okay, so let's add some other callbacks, some other events. I'm going to add one called create. And create, when it gets called, will return an object. So this event gets called whenever an object is created, is saved in the parse database, which matches this query. Now remember our query is foo must equal bar. So if we create an object in our database where foo is equal to bar, this code will get called back in our client code. And remember, this same code might be running on hundreds, if not thousands of people's applications, and all of them will get called back when that new object is created, which matches this query. So let me refresh the page, hit run so that we make sure we open the subscription. And now I want to go to the parse dashboard and let's create an item. So you can create a record by clicking the plus at the bottom. And the main thing I want to do is make foo equal to bar. I don't really care about the rest. So I just tab away, click somewhere else, and it gets saved. So that creates an object where foo is equal to bar. So now if I go back into my JS bin, you can see here, object created got called, and it's printing out the attributes, and the main attribute is foo is equal to bar. So that's the create event. Another event that, get, that we can subscribe to is actually what's called the update event. Updated, here we go. So this event gets fired, not when an object gets created, but when an object which matches this query is updated on the server side by perhaps the dashboard or perhaps any other user on the, on the system, on the platform. Hit run. The subscription is open. So now if I go back into the dashboard, let's change one of the 
records which would return some data. So this one, perhaps this one at the bottom, let's add a file to it just so we update it somehow. So now it's uploading, saved, go back to JSBin, here we go. So now we've got object, let me get some space here, object updated gets called, okay, because I added a file to it. Okay, so now we've got open, create, update, Let's add some more interesting ones. So we've got another event that gets fired that's called enter. Okay, so enter is a very important one to understand. So let me clear and run. So we make sure this code's available for us. So enter is called whenever an existing entry in our database is changed somehow so that it now matches this query, okay? So when we have something in our database which previously wasn't matching the query and it's changed, so it now matches the query. Now we have one entry here, the moo one. So if I now change that to bar, tab out so it saves, or press somewhere so it saves, and now this record didn't use to match the query, now it does match the query, so if I now go to JS bin, so here we go. So this object has now entered our query, okay? Because now it now matches the uh, restrictions or the constraints that we've passed onto the query. And the equal and opposite to enter is actually the leave event. So leave is called when an object which previously matched our query now exits our Query. Now it doesn't match our query anymore. So now I run to make sure it's running the, the latest code. We go back into the parse dashboard. This previously, now if I change this to moo, it now doesn't match the query and therefore I should receive a leave event. So if I tab out, that saves. If I go back to JS bin, and there we go, we've got an object left. So now this object, so it returns you the object that actually left your query. So this object now doesn't match your query. It used to match your query, but now it doesn't match your query. So how do we take advantage of all of that? Well, really what we need to do is we need to do kind of two things. So first, we do our query as we normally would do our query. We get our results object. So results is an array. Okay. So this is, this is one thing that we might do. So we might run a query as we normally would, store the results somewhere. Actually, it's all the same name, so results, maybe something like that. Store the results somewhere, then create a subscription, and then whenever something is created, if you remember something is created, what we might do is we might push it onto our results array, okay, because it's now added onto it. When something is updated, we may try and find it, find it in the results array, and then uh, make sure that the object is, uh, is replaced with the updated object. And again, enter is like create, so we would then push it onto our results array. And leave is a bit different. With leaves, we would find, and then delete. So leave means that we would probably have it in our array and in our array already. So we would find this object in our results array. And once we find it, we would then delete it. So in this initial query, we get the initial sets of data. We then subscribe for updates. And then by listening to the create, update, enter and leave events, we can then keep our results array updated with the latest results from the database as if that query was running in, in, in real time.